Okay, so I wanted to show you how to make artisan sourdough bread loaves. I just got two ready for the second rise, and so I wanted to show you how I mixed the dough up. So, if you have a, an, a scale, that's great. I just put a bowl on top, and then I zero it out, and I make sure that it's in grams, not ounces. And I start with sourdough starter, and I do 400 grams doesn't have to be perfect and it's active and bubbly. You don't want it too, um, too mature and you don't want it too low. And I went a little over, but it'll be fine. And then I just clear it again, zero it out. And then I do 500 grams of water. And you want water that is not from the tap, that has chlorine and may not rise properly. And I'm just gonna mix this up. And once again, it's not perfect. I just wanna combine. And there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my uh, thing in there and I'm gonna zero out again. And I'm gonna add 850 grams of flour. And this is just organic, all purpose from Costco. Again, I'm going to just pull a little bit out because I don't want it to be too dry. So I want about, oops, 800 grams. And too much. Okay, that's about good. And then I want 24 grams of salt and I like to use, and I zero that out again. And then go slow with this because this adds up quickly. That's 25, that's good. All right, I'm all done with the scale. All I have to do is mix. And this is gonna be a little shaggy. Um, so it's not gonna be completely hydrated. Um, so once I have it pretty good, it's so starting to come together. Now it's getting tougher. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and by the way, this tool is called the Danish dough whisk and it's incredible. Um, I'm just gonna pull most of it off and then I'm gonna go in with my hands and I'm just gonna start incorporating it all the way. You don't wanna knead it, but you just want to get most of the flour incorporated into the dough. And um, like I said, it's gonna be shaggy um, and that's what you want. All right, so it's about that perfect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a beeswax wrap, you can use whatever you want, and I'm gonna cover this um, so it doesn't dry out, and I'm going to let it sit for 40 minutes to do its auto-lease. Auto-lease means that all this shagginess is going to hydrate, and it's gonna be a smoother dough, and then we'll start our stretch and folds. All right, I'm gonna show you the first stretch and fold. Now we've just mixed our dough and we've done our auto lease for 40 minutes. I just got my hands wet, um, just rinsed them off in the sink to make it easier to grab. So I'm just gonna grab underneath and I'm gonna pull up and then I'm just gonna fold it over itself. I'm gonna rotate the bowl. and then we're gonna do it again. And last one. And then I like to just scoop it from underneath and just rotate it so it's, the seams are on the bottom. Then I cover it and then we set the timer for another 15 minutes. Okay, here's stretch and fold number two. I got my hands wet again, so it's easier to handle. I'm just getting underneath it. I'm pulling it up and I'm bringing it over myself. Rotate the bowl. Bring it up. 
And the purpose of the stretch and fold is to give it the texture of sourdough bread with the bubbles and um, the lightness. If you skip this, you'll still have an edible loaf, but if you want artisan sourdough bread that um, is light and airy, you wanna do this step. All right, here we go with round three, stretch and fold. I have my hands wet again. Once again, pulling up. The longer this goes, the more hydrated the dough gets, the more it starts to rise. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You can also see it's fully hydrated and it's shiny as opposed to the first time when it was shaggy and a little dry. So um, we're, we are working the gluten. Um, while the gluten's breaking down, we're stretching and we're going to create those beautiful bubbles inside by doing this. Once again, flip it over rest cover it back for three or four i'm sorry back for two or three more times all right stretch and fold number four wet hands under there it's going to take a little bit more patience because the dough is tighter now the gluten strands are developing and so it's going to take it has more strength and it's going to take a little bit more and just hold on to it and let it fall but don't let it rip one and we'll do one or two more of these all right round five get underneath on a full get underneath pull again be patient and I think this is gonna be my last stretch and fold. You can possibly do one more, but with how big the dough is getting, I just wanna let it rise um, from now on. So this will be my last stretch and fold. Again, bring it around. There you have it. Now this is gonna sit for anywhere from six to 10 to 24 hours. It depends where you live, your temperature and whether you want to put it in the fridge overnight or during the day. Uh, there's so many options. I'll explain more about that later, but I'm just going to let this sit probably until I go to bed and it's going to go to the fridge. All right, we're back. It's been about five hours and look how big this has gotten. So I want to go to bed and I don't want to mess with this tonight. So I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge. It's going to do a couple things. It's going to slow down the fermentation process so that it won't overproof while I'm sleeping, and also it will um, vastly increase the um, fermentation and health benefits. The longer your sourdough can sit, the better it will be, and the better it will be for you. So I'll show you in the morning what it looks like, but I was gonna show you. So I use my beeswax wrap. You can also use, and I've had this for a couple of years. It's getting gross. Um, I'm going to add a sep second one just to give it more coverage and um, put it in the fridge. So you can also use saran wrap, but you want to do it very loosely because it will continue to grow somewhat in the fridge and you don't want it to be hampered by too tight of a cover.
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to get your sourdough artisan dough um, into the bannetton basket. And these have been sitting out for at least 20 minutes. And what that's done is it has created a skin so it's not sticky. So if you don't take time to create the skin, you're going to have um, very wet dough and that is going to stick to your bannetton and it's going to be a disaster because you'll have to scrape it out. So um, all I'm doing is I'm taking my bench scraper, um, going underneath, I'm just scooping it all up and the skin goes down in the basket. And from here, we're going to let it rise for two to three hours in max, but we do not want to let it overproof. All right, here we go. Here's the next step. We're going to take our sourdough out of the ba Bannetton basket. And my last, the last shot, I forgot I was supposed to flour around before I put it in the basket, but thankfully it didn't stick. So here we go. I'm going to actually give this a little flour to give it contrast. So I'm gonna do is just um, go around and dust the loaf, and then I'm going to smooth it out. And this is optional, but if you want to create contrast in your design, scoring design, then you wanna do this. So then I'm going to be making the letter F today. And so I'm gonna go completely around instead of a score on the side, I'm gonna score all the way around so that my design in the middle has less chance of breaking or bursting. Okay. I'm gonna pick the top. Oh, there's a letter F. All right, I just took this Dutch oven out of the oven. Um, it was in there for um, almost an hour at 400 degrees. And then I'm going to set this in here. And then I'm going to put the lid back on. And this is gonna go back in the oven for 40 minutes. All right, once again, we're gonna get our dough out of the Bannetton basket. It's been proofing for two hours and I'm gonna dust it with a little bit of flour. Just gonna spread that around. Again, this is optional, but if you want to create contrast, this is a great way to do it. This is going to be a deeper score than the decorative. This um, Dutch oven has also been in the oven for about an hour or an hour. It's very important that you 
preheat the cast the cast iron direct oven um, so that um, you'll get the spring in the oven that you want. So I'm just gonna lift this up and I'm gonna drop it in. And then I like to flatten this out just a little bit because it will affect the shape of the very carefully of course. Um, will a shape will affect the shape of the loaf itself. So it's been 40 minutes. I'm taking this out. I'm putting, oh, that turned out good. I'm putting the Dutch oven back in the oven without the lid um, for an additional 10 minutes. And then that will help it to brown on top. All right, and here's our second loaf out of the oven. We have our jelly, which turned out subpar. <laughs> anyway, uh, 10 minutes back in the oven without the lid. All right, here's loaf number one. And here's loaf number two. And what I like to do is, once I take them out of the oven, I don't like them to stay in the pot because I think that it continues to cook on the bottom. So you're gonna have a really tough loaf. So I just grab the paper, set it on there, Grab this paper, put it on here, and I let them cool completely before I cut into them because if you do not, the texture will be off and um, a little gummy. So what I do is I put them on a wire rack and I cover them with a tea towel. 